My name is Kathy, and next year I will be going to Cornell University, the College of Arts and Science, hoping to major in chemistry and CS. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I guess my first question would be, when did you first consider Cornell as a possibility? Was it like always a dream school for you, or did it become one later? No, my dream school had always been MIT because for like the subjects mm -hmm. I'm interested in, MIT has always been very good in all of the subjects. And then next to that was Berkeley. But for me, some of the options, like the costs and like the places were not that good. So Cornell became a consideration like around June at this time of my application season. And why I considered it and like as high of a choice as I did is because it's also good in the majors I'm applying for, which is chemistry, CS, very good in physics as well. And it's close enough to my home, which is like, it's a six hour drive away. So it's close enough that I can like still come to my family, but not as close that I would like, it would, my family would be very close to me. So it's like far away. It's in a good location too, in my opinion, because I've always liked the natural wilderness and like exploring lakes and seeing stuff on campus, like natural beauty. Makes sense. All right. Uh, I guess there's like this idea that only superhuman teenagers get into Cornell. Uh, what would you say to that? I don't believe that that's true because I think that anyone could have a shot of getting into Cornell. All you need to do is like make your application stand out. Just like follow what you like to do and your application will show it. Like for me personally, I had a very specific project. It was about like renewable energy systems and I want to continue that in my study. So that like if you're more specific in your like passions it will show like it can't be just some niche thing it can't just be i like chemistry or i like cs it has to be something that like you're it's specific about you that will make you stand out so the more specific you are it doesn't matter if it's really good or not it doesn't matter if you're superhuman to do these things it just needs to be somewhat specific that will make you stand out and capture like the admission officer's interest in you okay okay perfect Okay, so like, what were the stats that got you into Cornell? So I'm going to talk about, let's talk about GPA and then follow it up with SAT or ACT. So for GPA, when I applied, I had a 4.488 unweighted. I mean, weighted, weighted, sorry. And for unweighted, it was about 3.92. Class mm -hmm. rank, I know a lot of schools do class rank, but my school personally doesn't do class rank. So I don't know how well I compare to other people. But I'd say that GPA wise, maybe like top 25%, you don't need to be have like a super good GPA because like everyone can have a good GPA. It's just it's just a certain threshold you have to pass that will allow you to like be considered or have a higher chance. And then I never took the ACT. And for the SAT, I ended up applying with a 1540 with a 740 on reading and 800 on math. And I do have advice for the SAT, like it, they don't care how many times you tried. I know for me, like I tried a lot of times because my reading score was never really good. So all they care about in the end is your final score. And if you can get that final score up, it also shows. But I also wouldn't like take it a ridiculous number of times because then you're just wasting your time that you could have spent on other things. Okay, so could you elaborate on how many times you took the SAT and what was the gap between each SAT and like how much did you improve over time? Yeah, okay. I actually, I think I took it like a total, okay, I took it a total of five times, but my fourth one was the highest because my fifth one I just took to see if I can get better. It was a free one that my school was offering, so I was like, sure, why not? So I just took it and I did worse because I didn't really study for that one. I was already happy with my 740 on reading and before I had like improved my reading score about like 10 points from the last time so it's not that high like my first reading score i think was a 700 and then it went to 720 and stayed at 720 until it got to 740. so considering the amount of time i spent i don't know if it's exactly worth it to take it am that much amount of times because it was only for like a 20 point increase which is not that good like you could spend that time doing other things i recommend like taking it two to three times if you're because anything beyond that is kind of unnecessary and you could just do more with your time so i guess a follow-up question would be what do you think is the cutoff for sat for cornell admissions i personally think it's somewhere around 1500 for like 
if you're at like a it depends on other background stuff like if you're at a like kind of low competitive school maybe a 1500 but if you're at like a really competitive school i say probably a 1550 which i know i didn't make that cut off but my application like if you make yourself unique and stand off it would be better so the so to be really considered i say just generally around 1470 maybe 1500 it doesn't have to be as ridiculous as a 1580 because anything beyond like a 1470 or is just like extra points Let's talk about APs. Uh, how many APs did you take? And were they, was your course schedule made so that you could master the major you were going to do? Or was it just random courses you liked? Yes, my, all of my courses were very, like, kind of stacked in the major I was interested in and also physics like I know I was considering like majoring in physics as well because I also had a deep interest in physics so all my courses were generally focused on CS chemistry and physics in my sophomore year I took AP chem and AP CS and then junior year I took AP physics both like both of the C's E&M and mechanics and then A push and also hold on Okay, I'll start over. So for my sophomore year, I took AP CS and AP Chem. And then my junior year, I took both of the physics, like the physics C's APs, which is ENM mechanics. I also took A push and then Chinese on top of that. And then in my senior year, I took Gov Lit. And then I actually had to retake both of the physics exams last year because I, I didn't do that well. I got a four last year on both of the physics exams. So I also retook them this year and this year I did better. So it was good. So that's like around, I'd say eight to seven AP classes, but also my school offered post AP classes. So after AP CS, I took AI and then for AP Chem, I took Organic Chemistry, which were both things in my major. And then after AP Physics, I took Electrodynamics, which is basically like a quantum course at my school. So those courses are like really hard courses. And I'd say they were like stacked in my major. And oh, wait, I forgot. I also took BC in junior year, and then I later took Multi this year. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right, let's shift gears real quick. Let's talk about extracurriculars. Uh... When did you realize you had to up your game in terms of extracurriculars and you had to? Yeah. I think up my game, like, like I, I realized I started considering this as a whole college application thing, like around junior year. Mainly, I just did extracurriculars because it was fun. So I joined chemistry team when I was like in sophomore year. And then I did a bunch of random extracurriculars like astronomy club, which like were just things that interested me, but were never like fully dedicated towards college applications and then in junior year i decided to join sayali because i was like oh i should really do some more extracurriculars if i want to have a good chance and then i I also considered like doing science fair projects and other stuff like that so i'd say like for the first two years for freshman and sophomore year you can just like do extracurriculars that you think will interest you because you never know what your major will be until then i'd say at the start of junior year is when you need to start getting more like competitive with your extracurriculars and starting to really focus on one thing that makes you unique what activity do you think what activity do you think uh, impacted your college decision the most for me it, i applied ed to cornell so that mm-hmm. alone like puts you have a higher chance if you do ed mm-hmm. and i know cornell i like researched a lot into it so i think the thing that impacted my application the most was what my like why this college essay because in it like there was a specific major in cornell arts and sciences it's called the college scholar major and i think no one applies as that major because it's a major once you get into cornell you have to apply for so like even if you apply as that major you won't get it and only a very select few people get that major in cornell so if i put if i apply as that major like on my application it show is like really rare and really intriguing i guess for the admissions officer to see that like they know about our school and they know about this program so they and they're really dedicated towards this major already and they're probably they probably like we think they have a better chance to make a succeed because of that because they're so early invested into this very unique thing that we have it's like very rare okay 
And could you walk us through a couple of your activities that you uh, put in your extracurricular profile for Cornell? My first one that I did was chemistry team. Uh, in the senior year, I was the co-captain of my team's of my school's chemistry team, and what we did was basically intensive competitions. Like this year, we attended WCT, and then we also host the USNCO, which is the national chemistry competition. In my junior year, I scored top ten in locals. And my second one, it was my ASIP internship, which was an internship at George Mason University that I did over the summer of my junior year. So I did that over the summer, just like just before I started senior year. And then my third one was Science, Science Olympiad, which I only did for just one year, which is my junior year. But I, during that time, I made like a lot of, I could talk about a lot of like deep bonds formed. I could also talk about the experiences I gained working together as a team and like earning some rewards for that. And then my fourth most important one is being a summer chemistry TA. I did this in my sophomore year summer. So I was like, I got paid, this was a paid job and I was helping like teachers teach kids summer chemistry at school. Okay, perfect. Okay, now let's talk about essays. Uh, so I guess my first question would be, how did you avoid writing the same essay as 50,000 other applicants to Cornell? I actually, so my main essay, my common app essay, I think it was weaker than my like Cornell specific essay. So my common app essay, I try to think like, like a specific subject. Like I know I like chemistry, but like what about chemistry is so unique? And I I realized like one of my ho one of my like hobbies is I really like listening to other people talk about their life stories and their perspectives. And what bring I think what makes me more unique is that I like listening to people and then I like putting their inputs together and then like forming groups. I like making connections. I like building the bridges between different people. So I tied this in together with chemistry team, which and where I was the officer, and then I tried to make bonds happen. I tried to make bonds like form, and then I think what was more intriguing about this, I added like a little spicy twist, like making bonds form is just like connecting molecules together. So I think like having a metaphor kind of spices it up a little, but it's definitely not necessary. If, if the main thing I would recommend is just like getting your point across. My point across was like humans are so different. We're also different, but we're also like very similar. And I think if we focus on our differences and our similarities together, we can grow and become much stronger than if we were apart. And I really wanted to relay that message across. What was your strategy for the Y Cornell essay? For this, I had to research a bit. So like I'd recommend don't even start first, like why Cornell? Like think about why Cornell at first. Like if you can't think about like a really good reason, then that means you probably have to do more research. So I knew I had to do more research into the college I was applying to. The why Cornell essay, like the 650 words is very specific to the College of Arts and Sciences. So you really want to dig deep into like what the College of Arts and Sciences has to offer. So there are several programs I looked into like that were very specific to arts and sciences. And I recommend like talking one ab about one of those in depth and like why it suits your goals, why it suits your needs. And also like, don't just talk about why them, also talk about why you. So you have to like emphasize your traits and how they match with a specific program that Cornell is offering. And you could add in a few courses, but I think like the things that are specific to Cornell, like its programs are like more than its courses, it will like tell them why you you should be attending this school because it's very specific to them and also maybe emphasize the location you can do other things that are unique to Cornell just like think about why what sets them apart from other colleges and really hone down on that let's talk about uh, authenticity I feel like a lot of uh, high school students might have questions about this so how do you be authentic while simultaneously trying to impress admission officers I think I, I think this, it's my bias, but like I really like short sentences as a way of authenticity. I think like the more you bloat your words or like use high vocabulary, the more they kind of not like negate the meaning behind what you're trying to say and who you are. Like short sentences that are powerful is like very good to convey your authenticity. So like I know in my essay, I use the word, I want my life to mean something or I want to help someone. Like those were very like short and like 
very common words, but together they're very powerful. And I think that the more like you write about different like things and different like putting together metaphors, it can be a little complicated and like not try to convey your main authenticity point across, which can make admission officers feel overwhelmed and then they don't really actually know who you are behind like a metaphor or something. So it's just just using concise wording and like maybe not trying to like overcomplicate sentences shows actually who you are inside. I think this is great advice. Yep. For sure, because uh, I, I feel like I, I did that a lot as well when I was writing my college essays, trying to use fancy yeah. words and, you know, trying to sound smart and everything. But I feel like it's just about connecting with the person. I did that too, yeah. like after, in my first drafts, and then I was like, oh, this is kind of... Okay, so if you could change one thing about how students approach college applications to Cornell, what would it be? Let me think. Yeah, I think, I think it, my biggest advice would be just like not rushing it. Like, I know for me, when if I ED'd, I, like, spent that entire four or, like, three months that I had to really think about what I was going to write. Like, I know I went, I burnt through, like, maybe 10 drafts of my Common App essay or my, like, Why Cornell essay. And I know I only applied to, like, a few, a very few number of colleges for the early application because I was mainly focusing on Cornell. I spent a lot of that time looking and revising my essays. So I just recommend maybe taking your time and really think about what you're going to write before you actually write it down. And also, you can, like, write things down, but they don't have to be final. Just, like, jot some ideas down. See if something works. If it doesn't work, then it's okay. You have more time to try again, and you can try again. I suggest you do try again. Because if a better idea pops up, then you should stick with that idea. And if not, you can also ask other people to give you advice. And one thing you'll notice when you ask for advice, not everyone will say the same things and sometimes they're contradictory. So yeah. when you do ask advice, I'd recommend like taking all of that in. No, no advice is like not important, but just think about what which ones matter more and which ones don't matter as much and like go with your heart. Like tell do what you think is best at like using all that advice and using what you think you could fix on your essay because no one knows your essay better than you. Okay. I guess my last question would be, what are you most anxious about heading into college? I think I'm anxious. This, this kind of sound kind of dumb, but like I'm anxious about the distance. Like, I, my, my dorm right now is supposedly located very far from the main campus and I don't know <laughs> how I'm going to walk all of that distance in like a very short period of time. And also my schedule right now has like 40 minutes in between each things like during noontime. So I don't know when I'll have lunch and I don't know if I could walk 